I want to talk about the zeros of a polynomial function. And let's start by looking at three examples of quadratic functions, which are polynomials. And uh, my three examples, remember the graph of a quadratic is a, is a parabola. And these three examples show one of the things about polynomial functions. The zeros, you can have two real zeros for a quadratic function, one real zero, or none. And I want to investigate uh, that a little bit further. For example, for this function, f of x equals x squared minus 6x minus 7. You can factor this in order to find the zeros. Right? The x squared means I'm going to have an x and an x. And the 7 means I'm going to have a 1 and 7. So I just need to figure out whether I need a plus or minus here and here in order to get the minus 6. Well, 1 has to be plus and 1 has to be minus to get the minus 7. So let's make this minus and this plus, and I'll get x minus 7x is minus 6x. So that works. And the zeros for this guy are negative 1 and 7, the zeros of these two factors. Now let's look at this guy, the one that just sort of touches the x-axis and bounces off. Right? This is a perfect square, and it factors as x minus 3 squared. And so its zeros are just 3. Well. Because x minus uh, 3 is a factor twice, we say that 3 is a 0 of multiplicity 2. And finally, what are the zeros of this polynomial? Now, it may not cross the x-axis, but it does have zeros. There are numbers that will make this polynomial 0, but they're imaginary. Let's use the quadratic formula to find them. So we need x equals negative b. 6, plus or minus, the square root of negative b, square, uh, b squared, which is 36, minus 4ac. So minus 4 times 13, which is negative 52. All over 2a, over 2. So I have 6, plus or minus. This is negative 16. And the square root of negative 16 is 4i, over 2. This becomes 3 plus or minus 2i. These are the two zeros, the zeros of h, 3 plus or minus 2i. So when you look at the results here, you see that the function f had two real zeros. This one has two real zeros if you count multiplicity. And this one has two imaginary zeros. Let's take a look at a theorem that's going to be true for all polynomials, not just quadratics. A degree n polynomial has n zeros, counting multiplicity. Always n. So like a, a degree 5 polynomial will have five zeros if you count multiplicity. The conjugate zero, zeros theorem is another important one. If a polynomial function has all real coefficients, and most of the ones we study do, its imaginary zeros come in conjugate pairs. Just to show you, this was an example of that. This function h of x, this has all real coefficients. 1, negative 6, and 13 are real numbers. And these two zeros, 3 plus and minus 2i, those are conjugate pairs. So the imaginary zeros came in conjugate pairs. That always happens as long as your polynomial has all real coefficients. So let's take a look at an example. Here I have a third degree polynomial. Right? A degree 3 polynomial, by this theorem, is going to have three zeros. And if I know that f of 5 plus i equals 0, then I know that 5 plus i and 5 minus i are zeros. So that's how I use these two theorems to analyze the zeros of a polynomial. And I'll do a little bit more with that in a future example.